I hope you are all doing good. I'm Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me. Continuing here with the same topic we've seen, applying the theorem of Pappus, but here we are looking at cone, the volume of a cone. You know, based on this theorem, the basic aspect here is a certain region of space, area between curves or lines, however you want to call it, this region having a certain centroid undergoes a rotation around a line of axis. The volume here being equal to the area which you see the shaded region times the distance the centroid is traveling by means of a single line of rotation. It can be a times 2 pi the x value or it can be a times 2 pi the y value. If it's a vertical line of rotation you're looking in the x dimension you're looking at this. For a horizontal line of rotation then obviously you're looking at that. What we are doing here is a cone and I want to do everything here with regards to just a single technique, a single line of rotation. Therefore, we may be looking at a vertical line of rotation here. Everything will begin by means of this depiction right here, r comma 0, 0 comma h. You know you have a certain segment, you do a y axis rotation, you are generating a, a cone. We know that. We are determining the volume of this cone by means of this theorem and you have to determine the x and the y value of the centroid it could be some value right over here you have to determine this equation also you can see it y is equal to minus h or r x plus right here your y intercept since everything with those centroid equations are dx you can maintain this equation the x value what will it be we have an area what's the area of a triangle half base times height but here bases are you can say r h over 2 that's what we have the reciprocal of that would be 2 over r h looking from 0 to r x times this your function right here minus h x over r plus h why is this the function because when you're looking at this this represents here my top boundary curve my this will be lower boundary curve the top boundary curve is your function which has this equation for that line with respect to dx you can integrate all of this and when you do it you'll have here x is equal to i won't show you all of this it requires basic polynomial integration with the upper and the lower limits you will get basically r over 3 there's a little bit of algebra which comes in in terms of simplification cancelling isolating all of that but you can do it you'll have r over 3 when you do the y value of that centroid what do you have again 2 over r h again 0 to r but there's a 1 over 2 this 1 over 2 you might as well push it out these twos here numerator denominator would cancel out anyhow this f of x would be this minus h x or r plus h whole square dx and now when you look at this you have to do an expansion here of this binomial you can do that but when you would do all of this in terms of its simplification you'll get this y value of the centroid would be h over 3 but just to get you started just looking right over here you would have to open this up you'll have h square x square over r square plus h square minus then you know you have a square plus b square minus 2ab here you have a minus 2ab factor you'll have a minus 2 h square x over r and then obviously when you look here 2 over 2 r h is 1 over r h so for the purposes of this video i have skipped out on this definite integration because you all know how to do it. it's polynomial integration there is no u substitution or any of that coming in we have our centroid value now let's do the volume volume is equal to the area times the distance the centroid is traveling with regards to a rotation what's the area again is this r h over 2 r h over 2 now we multiply it by the distance 2 pi well a vertical line of rotation therefore i'm looking across in an x dimension because i'm looking across in an x dimension you would have everything here with regards to cylindrical shells and riemann rectangles you would be looking always perpendicular to your line of rotation I have a vertical line of rotation perpendicular to that is in the x dimension that x dimension would imply that i'm using r over 3 which you know is this value right here solve it out you can cancel out this you can cancel out that you'll have a r times r which is an r square you have a pi with an over 3 and then you have an h pi r squared h is the volume of a cone and we've determined it and it's not too hard again when you're looking at this particular procedure here by means of this theorem for the cone the hardest part is none of this part is just this the centroid determination and the algebra and the simplification which come with it with regards to your definite integration procedure but the procedure here everything is good the centroid value r over 3 h over 3 is right it, there's no mistake in that thank you for watching